All right, everybody. Thanks for joining this morning. This is Zach Eichenberger, Director of Product and Services here for Controlled Product Systems Group. We have Identive with us today. Identive, what you should know, has a vast lineup of access control solutions. Today, we're going to focus on their credential offerings. And while we've entered this age of apps and facial recognition, LPR, geofencing, et cetera, the demand for physical credentials has not let up. I think it's, you know, rising tides, if you will, for security in general uh, continues to drive demand. So Diane Kellenbeck, Western Regional Sales Manager for Identif, will educate us on the various form factors available, technologies, and probably to me, the most important thing, the resources to ensure we order credentials properly, avoiding you know, costly mistakes and time loss. We've all been down that road if you've lived in the access control world for a while. In addition to, I, to Diane, we have Butch Shower, CPSG, uh, RFID Business Manager, and Daniel Forte, CPSG's Access Control Business Manager, as well as the connectivity team uh, on this call. Uh, they are here to answer any questions from uh, the controlled products front, if you will. So, Diane, thanks for being such a valued partner and for organizing and presenting today. What do you have for us? Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the warm welcome um, and appreciate everybody's time today. I know you're busy. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to kick us off. Um, thank you for giving a little bit of an overview about Identiv. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit more detail on Identive and exactly who we are. Um, I'll go through our credential and reader portfolio. Um, and then when we talk about high security credentials and keys that are involved with that, we have a solution for custom keys that we call our VIP, and then some tools that are available around that, um, some new product updates, and then um, Zach was talking about some of the resources to help make your life easier um, and make sure that we get the right kind of information um, and some tools for your success. So I'll go through those and then some of the marketing resources that we have available to you guys as a partner company. Um, and then of course, we'll have time for Q&A. So um, I will get started. Um, so just a little bit about Identiv. Uh, we are a security uh, manufacturing company, kind of end-to-end -end security as it relates to physical access control. Um, we have everything from access control software. We manufacture our own controllers, readers, and credentials as well. Um, I am specifically focused on credentials as well as readers, um, but we do have other solutions that are available. Um, we have our logical access side of the business. So we manufacture uh, desktop readers that use USB um, for authenticating to uh, online uh, um, systems or um, authenticating, uh, you know, using passwords, uh, using a card instead of password, that type of thing. And then we have our IoT side of the business. And this is where we manufacture uh, tags, RFID tags, inlays, labels for identifying things, not necessarily people. So that's a whole other side of our business. Um, so we are a global company. Um, <clears throat> we have offices in a number of different locations. You can kind of see the dots there and where they're listed. I think most important for um, our relationship is our operation facility headquarters that's based out of uh, Southern California in Santa Ana, California. So all of our cards, all of our readers are shipped out of Santa Ana, California. Um, <clears throat> not sure if anybody has heard the announcement. Um, this came out probably about three weeks ago that um, Identiv is, has entered into a purchase agreement with Vita Protect. This is a company in France. Uh, they have over 14 different companies. So we will be, um, that will be official at the end. <clears throat> probably in Q3 sometime. Um, so if I go back up here, um, the two organizations that you see are the two parts of the business in red and blue, the physical axis and logical axis. Those will be, um, we, we're gonna be going from a uh, publicly traded company to a private company. 
So um, we will now be called Identiv Security. And then the IoT side of the business will be off on its own. It'll still be a publicly traded company. Um, <clears throat> and they will be um, a separate company from Identiv. So just a heads up on that, I did include a link to the press release. So if you want some more information, and of course, I'll keep everybody updated, um, you know, as that becomes official. Um, so a quick overview of our credential portfolio. Um, so Identif has been in the credential business for over 40 years. Um, <clears throat> we make everything from proximity credentials, low frequency, which I think most of the business that we do with you guys is on the low frequency side. Um, but of course, we have high frequency options that includes uh, MyFair, Desfire. So those are use 13.56 megahertz and um, have a, more security benefits as well as storage benefits. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we have our TS cards. Um, so these are the identity cards that uses Desfire technology. And then there are some options for either single technology or dual technology. Um, we do also have uh, UHF cards. So if you have customers, I know you guys do a lot in long range. Um, so if you did have a customer that needed a card, maybe instead of a windshield tag or some other kind of vehicle tag for long range using UHF, um, if they wanted that as a card and they wanted to combine other technology, either low frequency or uh, smart card technology, we have options for that. And then for those customers that need to have um, high security cards using a contact chip, we also have cards that support that. Um, in, ter in terms of form factor, um, you guys are probably familiar with a lot, uh, most of these anyway, um, the clamshell cards, ISO PVC, ISO composite, um, key fobs, we also have adhesive disks. So if you have a customer who, uh, we have a lot of customers that use this little adhesive disk, they'll um, use their phone for physical access control. So maybe instead of using like Bluetooth for uh, mobile access, they'll just put a disk on their phone and now they can use their phone. The disks are also used for maybe putting on equipment that um, they wanna be able to identify. So, um, we have options available for that. We have um, we have a version of this that's called a TOM, which stands for tag on metal. So if the tag is gonna go, as you guys know with RFID, um, our RFID and metal don't always um, uh, get along so well. So we do have a, a version of the disc that is made to use directly on metal. And then of course we have a bunch of different uh, wristbands fixed size wristbands, adjustable wristbands. Um, we're seeing a lot of use for wristbands in education. So in elementary and middle school, um, where they're giving wristbands to the students. Sometimes it's used for uh, bus access or for tracking so that they know when the kids are getting on and off the bus, they don't want them to have a card. It's easier for them to wear wristbands. So that's um, one application. Another application for wristbands is um, at resorts or somewhere where there's a pool and they want someone to be able to use a wristband um, to get access into the uh, maybe the the gym or the pool area <clears throat> and it's easier than having to have a card with them and then we've got like paper and woven wristbands and these can be used for um, maybe uh, you know shorter events maybe a three-day uh, concert or convention where um, you know that wristband's not going to last for, um, you know, for a year. It's just going to be more for a short term. And in any of these cases, we can do custom printing. We can do custom colors. Obviously, MOQ apply. But, um, you know, if you do have a customer that wanted to have a special color, wanted to do custom printing on the wristbands, that is an option that is available. Um, in terms of cards, um, we support over 43 different bit formats. Um, you guys probably mostly run into the 26D bit format or the H10301. That's large population of those cards that are out there, but there's a lot of other bit formats that are also out there and we support um, a lot of them. Um, so we have this, this uh, format list where we show what 
what we call the format and then other reference formats. So, um, you know, in, in regard to 26D, there's some other companies that maybe reference 26A. So if you have a customer that says they're using 26A, you can look at this and know that it's more than likely the H10301 or the 26D bid format. So just wanted to bring this to your attention um, so that if you do have customers that um, are using one of these bit formats, um, you know, this is a good place to go and look. If you don't see it on here, reach out to me and I can help you with that. Um, in terms of readers, uh, we have our U-Trust uh, reader family. So um, Mullion, single gang, we've got options with keypad. They can be single technology, dual technology. These all use industry standard communication protocols. So um, Weekend, OSDP. Um, <clears throat> so these readers are available to you guys um, as an option. Um, we also have our Primus reader. Um, this is a very affordable option. So if you have a price sensitive project and um, you need a, a card reader, uh, this would be a good option for you. The list price on this is $110. So it's low cost. Um, it uses weekend. It, there, it's only avail available in a mullion form factor. Um, it supports 125 kilohertz. It also supports 13.56 megahertz, but it will only read the UID or the card serial number of the high frequency card. So just as an FYI, um, just wanna make sure that you're aware of that. And then it comes in white, uh, black, matte and black glossy. And if you do have a customer, or even if you guys wanted to, you could do private labeling on this uh, reader. So that is an option. Um, of course, MOQ applies, but that is potentially an option. So just be aware of that. Um, we do have an option for uh, mobile uh, credentials, uh, mobile readers. This uses Bluetooth. Um, it's, it's actually a pretty slick solution. Um, so you have your app on the phone. You don't have to take your phone um, out of your pocket or out of your briefcase or out of your purse. Um, you just have the app on the phone running in the background, and then you wave your hand in front of the reader. Um, and that shows intent. So it's called capacitive uh, sensor technology. Um, so if you're interested in this, um, I can send you, we have a, a video that shows this uh, solution in action. Um, and then we also have a starter kit. So if you have a customer that's maybe interested in using mobile, um, but they're not ready to do a full deployment across their organization, um, this includes a reader and then 10 different, uh, or 10 credentials. Um, so again, just kind of a way for them to give it a test drive and make sure that uh, this is the solution that works for them before they they do the full deployment. Um, and as Zach mentioned before, you know, um, there is a lot more interest in mobile credentials. Um, but, you know, in most cases, even with mobile, most customers are going to also have still have a requirement for for physical cards. They may have um, employees carry both. They may have some employees that don't want to use mobile. Um, so they're still going to use physical credentials. So um, even even as mobile credentials get more traction, um, I, you're, there's still going to be a high demand for physical cards. Um, <clears throat> so moving into the VIP solution, <clears throat> so with a, uh, 125 kilohertz prox, um, again, it's there's a ton of it out there. Lots of people are using it, um, but it, uh, it is also very easy to, to clone and to duplicate. You can buy these very inexpensive devices on the internet. You can read a prox card and you can write it to another card and there kind of goes your security. Um, so we do also offer high frequency or 13.56 megahertz smart card technology. Um, the benefits of smart card technology is the security um, because you have to have mutual authentication between the card and the reader. So basically they have to communicate back and forth with each other. Um, the data is encrypted the data is secured with a key. Um, and the important thing about the key is that the card and the reader have to share the same key. So you could have a Desfire card that has, uh, you know, one key and then a Desfire reader that has another key. And if they don't share the same key, 
they're that data is not going to get read from the card. So um, that's definitely one of the biggest benefits of smart card technology. Um, the other benefit is storage. So if you have customers that want to put other applications or write data to the card, um, smart card technology has options for additional memory. Um, obviously, what they're going to be writing to that card um, is going to dictate the amount of uh, memory that they're going to need. So if you do have customers that are kind of going down that path and you want to you know, have a discussion about what the best options are for them, maybe the memory size that they might need, um, feel free to give me a call. We can talk through that. Um, I will say that some customers um, end up using like an 8K card and they're not writing any other information to it. So they end up paying a lot of money for memory they're not even using. So, um, you know, we can kind of help with that as well, um, just to make sure that they get, you know, the memory size that's the best fit for them. Um, one of the uh, benefits specific to Desfire technology versus some of the other smart card technology that's out there is it's open platform. So they don't restrict the data or the applications that can get written to the card. It is standards based and it's not single sourced. So, again, just some of the benefits of Desk wire technology and smart card technology in general. Um, so Identive's solution for high frequency um, is our TS cards and readers. We use um, NXP uh, Desk wire technology for these cards. Um, it's really a turnkey solution because um, out of the box, our Desk wire, our TS cards work with our TS readers. Um, the options for these, again, is either single technology cards or dual technology cards. Um, and then on the reader side, the same thing. You need to be, either be single technology or dual technology. If you have customers that are migrating away from 125 kilohertz procs, we can have that discussion. Is it better for them to use a dual technology reader or a dual technology card? Um, you don't want to use a dual technology card with a dual technology reader. Um, so we can kind of talk maybe what the best path for them is, or even a new, de new deployment, you know, happy to talk through that if you've got, um, you know, a new project that you're working on. Um, one of the things too, uh, you know, besides Desfire technology being open architecture, Identive also tries to be very open. Um, so we do publish our application structure that we um, use for the TS cards. So if it needs to be supported by other third-party manufacturers, maybe for other applications, um, again, we try to be very open with that. Um, so when we talk about, um, you know, Desfire technology and keys, by default, when you use a TS card or reader, it uses the identity default key. Um, but we do also offer custom keys. So if you have an end user customer who um, wants to have a little bit more control um, and they have a larger deployment, we can create custom keys for them. Um, and the benefit of that is that now they own the key. So if at some point they want to use that key for other applications or share it with another manufacturer, they have the ability to do that. If you use a manufacturer's key, you that key can't be shared. There's no manufacturer that's going to share their key for security reasons. But for an end user, they basically have the uh, control of sharing that key. Um, so and in that case, once the key gets created, either they can control the key or we can keep it secure for them. So there are some options on you know, how they want to do that. Um, we have a, some new tools in place. We have a, um, a data sheet specific to the VIP program, kind of talks about what it is, what the benefits are, and what the process is for uh, creating a custom key. Um, I will say when we do create a custom key for an end user customer, we create custom part numbers for that customer so that when they order a card or they order a reader, it's specific to the key that's going to get loaded onto the card and the reader. So there is a little bit of a process in place, um, but just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on that. And then we have a, a, a new tool. Um, it includes the installation and the user instructions for creating that key. The tool can be used um, if the customer already has their own key and they want to um, transfer that key to Identive so that we can load it onto our cards and readers. 
that tool can be used for either that purpose or it also can be used to create a brand new key. Um, so I've included links here for um, both of those resources. Um, again, if you have any questions about that or you need some help with a customer that might be interested in uh, doing their custom keys, or even if you guys wanted to do your own custom key, um, we also have um, you know, some, some of our partners that have chosen to do their own key. So that's also an option as well. Um, some new product updates. Um, so I showed you before the different wristbands that we have. Um, the, the adjustable one that we have is available in white and black. Um, this is a different form factor. It's a little bit more slimline. Um, so this is going to be coming soon and it can support different chip types. So it can be 125 kilohertz procs. It could be um, MyFair compatible. It can be MyFair classic, Desfire, different memory sizes. So um, by default, it will be either black or white. But if, again, if you have customers that want to do a specific color, um, we can, that would be an option. We can also do custom printing on this. Um, the, the numbers that get programmed will be etched onto the inside of the wristband. Um, and the MOQ on this would be 100, which is the same as our other wristbands. So just wanted to make you aware, we do have um, one project um, kind of in the works on wristbands with you guys. So, um, you know, hopefully there will be other opportunities for wristbands and this could potentially be a good option. Um, I think that this, the fixed size wristbands can be a little bit of a challenge because if you have, you know, you think about all the different sizes of wristbands. So if you get a fixed size, it's not always going to work for everyone. So the adjustable ones usually work a little bit better when, you're, when we're looking at wristbands. Um, I talked about the TS cards before. Um, one of the things that we've done with our TS cards is we've kept the memory on them very low to keep the, the price um, not just competitive, but also affordable. So if you have customers that want to use smart card technology for the security and the, the memory benefits, um, we've kept the, uh, the cost of that very low so that it's easy for them to use that technology or affordable for them to use that technology. But in some cases, they do need additional memory for other to write other applications or uh, data to the card. So we now have versions of our TS cards that support um, 8K memory. It um, always it still has the same seven byte UID, um, but again, just more memory on the card. So just just an FYI on that. Um, we also have a new key fob. Um, this is a Desfire specific key fob. So it's um, it's a little bit flatter, um, a more thin line than the other key fobs that we have. And if you've ever worked with Desfire or smart card technology, the read range is shorter than 125 kilohertz. And so the design of this key fob helps a little bit with the read range as well with the Desfire uh, technology in the key fob. So uh, this is also available. Um, and then we also, um, talked about uh, UID printing. So there's two different ways that you can read a, um, a smart card. You can either uh, read the what's called the UID or the unique ID, or it's also called the card serial number. Um, basically, I compare this to the VIN of a car. So it's a unique number that gets assigned at the time that the chip is manufactured. Um, it can be read, but it's not secured. Um, it's not secured with a key. There's no mutual authentication. Um, and in some cases, customers just want to read the UID. So they're using 13.56 megahertz um, and they just want to read the UID. Um, we can now print the UID number on the card, not necessarily in that location. It can be typically it's in the lower right hand corner on the back of the card. But um, I just kind of wanted to show you what that looked like. Um, it's not done by default, so you have to specify it. Um, but we do have improved turnaround time on printing the UID. And then, of course, the other way of reading a, a smart card is the secure sector. So that's where the data is secured with a key. You've got the mutual authentication. Um, so just know that we do have the ability now to, to print the UID um, on the card. And now moving into promos, reminders, and resources. Um, so we, we try to run quarterly promotions. Um, that, and this is specific to 
your sales team. Um, this is not necessarily geared towards your customers, but it's geared towards you. So if you switch a customer, um, the first one is the switch and save. So if you um, or one of your salespeople switches a customer from another brand, be it HID or some other brand of cards to Identive for every hundred cards that you switch, you get a $5 Amazon gift card. So there's some information that you know, need to note on the PO. We keep track of that. And then at the end of the quarter, then we send out um, rewards. We're also doing an end of quarter uh, bonus. So to the salesperson who switches the most cards, they get an additional $100 Amazon gift card. So I've literally had customers that have salespeople that have earned thousands of dollars in Amazon gift cards. So it's, um, it's, it's a nice way to earn some money just by switching customers to Identive. Um, and then we also have a service technician. This is a brand new uh, promotion for us. So if you have service technicians in the field that aren't, and they're working with a customer that maybe has never bought cards from you before, and they get them to uh, start buying cards from you, uh, and then from Identive, uh, they will get a $5 Amazon gift card for every order that gets submitted. So there's uh, we have a sheet to keep track. And then at the end of the quarter, um, we'll send out those rewards. And then we've got uh, bonuses for first, second, and third place. So um, if you want more details on this, I'm happy to send it out. In fact, um, when I send out the presentation, um, or I can work with Zach on getting the presentation sent out, I can send out the details on the uh, promotions that we're running this quarter. Um, some pricing updates. Uh, we will have a new uh, a price list that's going out this month, but we are not really expecting any changes. So um, I think for the most part, we're looking pretty solid. Um, all of our prices are in your system. So um, again, we're not really looking at any major changes. Um, we did have a surcharge on our readers. Um, just because of all the shipping charges, you probably had other manufacturers that you were working with that were doing the same thing, but that had, that was discontinued in February. So, um, just kind of an FYI, um, some new sales tools. Um, these are tools that we put together to, um, hopefully make your lives a little bit easier. Um, we have a how and why to, or why and how to sell technology credentials. So, um, it, talks through the benefits of selling uh, credentials, the decision makers that you're going to want to target and talk to, specific questions to ask, um, and then kind of the process for um, getting the information that you need from them on the type of cards um, that they are using or that they should be using. Um, and then we also put together a list of acronyms and definitions uh, as you guys know, you guys probably have a lot of different uh, acronyms that and terminology that's used in other aspects of your business that the same is true for credentials. Um, so we're talking about bit format, uh, facility code, um, ISO 14443, ISO 15693. So all these different, you know, uh, terms that are used, it gives a, a list of all that. So I think it's a really great resource. These are available on our partner portal. So if you don't have access to that, it's very quick and easy. I can get that to you or I can even send it out to you guys. Um, but I think that these are really great tools um, to kind of make your life a little bit easier. Um, so more tools that we have for your success, um, very competitive pricing. Um, I mentioned before all the different bit formats that we support. Um, we're always looking to add to that list. So if there is a bit format that you don't see, let me know and um, we can add, um, you know, we can try to decode those formats and add it to the list. Um, we've got quick turnaround on shipping um, for cards. I mean, we usually say two days. Honestly, if we get an order in before 12, um, we sometimes we can even get it out the same day. Um, I don't want to promise that, but if you do have an urgent request, let me know and I will, um, we can always request, I can go to our production team and say, hey, they, you know, is there any way that we can get this out today or even the next day, whatever it happens to be. We try to be as accommodating as we can. Um, it's not always an option, but um, you know, let me know. I'm happy to work with you on that. 
Um, and then custom printing, um, if you do have customers that want to do, we've done this before with some of your customers, they needed to have custom printing on the cards. So we have the ability to do that. Obviously lead time um, is a little bit longer with that. Um, it's usually six to eight weeks on custom artwork. And there's a process, you know, obviously we need to get artwork files from you guys, um, get the proofs uh, created, get those signed off. And then once the proof is signed off, then we're we'll create a custom part number and then we're ready to go. So um, next up, um, this is where we keep track of the card numbering sequence so that you guys don't have to and so that your customers don't have to. Uh, I'm sure you've dealt with uh, situations before where your customer can't remember their card programming. There may be, uh, depending on you guys, to look it up in your system. Um, so we try to make that a little bit easier with Next Up, um, where we we keep track of that. So basically, you just fill out a very short application. Um, once the application is completed, we assign a Next Up account number specific to that end user. And then going forward, all you need to do is note the Next Up account number on the PO for that end user, along with the part number. Um, it's not part number specific, but um, you do need to note the next step account number. And then we'll take it from there. We know what the next number is. This comes in handy um, for customers that are ordering. Um, you know, usually we say the minimum requirement for doing next step is a thousand cards or more a year. Um, so if you have customers that are ordering larger quantity of cards, this is a good option. Or Another way that this comes in really handy is customers that might be ordering cards from different locations. So they're ordering the same cards, but one person's not keeping track of what the other location ordered. And so this makes life a lot easier. We do not charge extra for this. So if you have ever dealt with the HID Corporate 1000, it's very similar to that. HID charges a fee for it. We do not charge a fee for it. Um, so know that this is available and can make your life a lot easier. If you do have customers that are using existing credentials, um, the easiest way to get the information is to have them take a picture of the label that's on the box and then send it to me. It usually will tell me everything that we need to know, even if it's not our cards, if it's a competitor's, um, this is the best way to get the information, the easiest way. Um, you can ask them all these questions, but again, the easiest way is just to uh, get a picture of the label on the box. They don't always keep it. Sometimes they throw it away. Um, if that's the case, you can have them send one of the cards into us for evaluation. Um, we do a quick turnaround on those, but I do need to give you a reference number. So if you want, if you want to have your customer send in the card for us to try to determine the card uh, technology and programming, let me know, I'll give you a reference number. And that way, that's how we track it in our system. So we know who the card belongs to when we get it in. Um, we also send free samples. So if you have customers that um, maybe wanna give our cards a test drive before switching over, if they're not 100% sure about the technology or the card programming, they think they know, but they're not 100% sure, let's send them some samples so that they can test those cards first and make sure that they're going to work um, with their existing card population. Um, so basically to do that, you just fill out this sample order form, you send it to customer service, you can copy me on it. Um, and then we try to get those turned around very quickly because we know that, you know, that there's potentially an order waiting for this. So we get those turned around very quickly. Um, and then some partner resources. As a partner, you're um, by default part of our uh, concierge credential program. So available to you, we have, um, we talked about the product samples. Um, even if you have a reader opportunity, um, you know, maybe for the Primus reader and you want to, uh, your customer wants to test it out first, let me know. I mean, we, you know, we need to talk through what that opportunity is, but we could we could potentially send a sample reader to them to test that as well. So um, it, this isn't just limited to credentials. Um, and then, of course, we talked about the promotions. Uh, we do a qu quarterly webinar um, that you guys have access to. If you 
If you want to do education and training within your organization, um, maybe a new group of or a group of new employees, we can set that up and do that. If you want to do um, maybe education and training for customers, happy to do that as well. I'm also available um, if you have uh, credential opportunities or reader opportunities and you want me to help and get involved in discussions with your customers, happy to do that as well. Um, so please use the resources that are available to you. We wanna be a good partner and be available to you and um, open up some new doors of opportunity. Um, the partner portal I mentioned before, so there's some resources that are available on our website, but we also keep some things you know, um, in the partner portal specific uh, to our partners. If you don't have access, um, you can just register for access. It's very quick and easy. Um, there's a lot of great information on there. So reportings of previous webinars, um, their sales and marketing kits. So images of our products are on there. Um, some of the tools that we talked about, again, some of it's on our website, but some of it is only available on our partner portal. So, um, you know, if you want access, there's information on here on how to register and <clears throat> Let me know. It makes it uh, very easy to, uh, or we try to make it very easy to get uh, access to that. And then <clears throat> um, Ryan Burke is our senior marketing operations manager. She is an amazing resource. So as a partner, um, she's a great person to work with. We can do co-branded collateral, some of uh, the things that we have available, whether it be data sheets, order forms, um, even some of the, the tools that we, the sales tools that we have available, if you wanna do your branding on there, um, Ryan would be a great person to work with on that. We can do, if you wanna do some email campaigns, um, lunch and learns, partner webinars, I mean, whatever um, you, you can think of for um, marketing, Ryan's a great person. You can either reach out to her directly. I would actually, maybe ask that you just reach out to me and then I can put you in touch with Ryan. I'd like to just kind of be in the know of what she's working with you on, um, but she's a great resource. So um, as an organization, I think she would be, um, you know, I would encourage you to take advantage of the resources that we have available to you um, on the marketing side. Um, and with that, um, I've been talking a lot. So uh, let's, would love to open it up to q and It looks like there's already some on here. Yeah, um, I'll jump in here real quick, Diane. I mean, one thing that I take away from this session is just the breadth of product. And the, pro I mean, you guys reach out to CPSG for pricing, but I already know the pricing is gonna be extremely competitive uh, through Identiv. So reach out to CPSG to get pricing on the common cards that, or credentials that you're typically using and the turnaround. So you're getting a high level of service on a wide breadth of product in terms of credentials across many different lines. And you can see there's a lot of formats out there in the world. And these guys have the, the knowledge and the know-how to ensure that you get a compatible card for your application. And yeah, we got a couple questions that have come through the, the chat here. Do you want to address those directly or do you want me to tee them up? Um, yeah, I can, I can, um, I can, looks like I have access, so I'll read them out. Um, okay, uh, next question, do the mobile readers, readers also read cards or just smartphones with the app open? So um, the readers support 125 kilohertz. They do not currently support 13.56. So if you've got customers that are using prox cards, yes, it will read prox cards, but it won't read um, the high frequency cards. Um, um, let's see, how does it unlock door gates? I can take that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so today what we've mainly been talking about are credentials and readers, not access controllers. So just keep in mind that Yes, Identif has access controllers as well that would actually provide the relay contacts to open those doors or gates, but their readers are also compatible with many other access control platforms. So we need we do need an access control platform. Uh, I could be wrong here, Diane, but these are not standalone, or I'm not sure if you offer any standalone card readers, keypads. Um, 
but in general, you'll need another access controller, correct? Yes, that is correct. These are not standalone. They need to be tied into an access control system. Yep. We can help you with that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, do you have an exploded view of how it works? I'm assuming that is um, for the mobile. I can send, I can include a link to a video, um, Zach, as well, when you send that information out. So I'll send those all to you. Um, and we can, you can kind of see that in action, what that looks like. Excellent. And David, your question, do you have an exploded view of how it works? If that's, um, you know, how it, how these readers connect to access controllers, um, obviously it would vary based on the access controller, but in, in a standard weekend format, we've got tons of options. So uh, we can, we can work with you directly on that one. Okay, perfect. Um, and then her scramble pads, yes, um, you guys do have access to our scramble pad, not the government ones, um, but you do have access to the commercial scramble pads, um, and that is included in the price list. So um, you do have access to that. I know I have gotten a couple of inquiries about the scramble pads from control products. Um, and then um, on the credential type for the partner portal, um, yes, uh, choose credential partner. Um, there, you should be able to access everything that you need to. If there's other products that you need additional information for, let me know, I can get you access to that, but you'll have information on both credentials and readers. Um, and then if you do need access to other things, um, let me know. And again, I can, I can try to get you um, some information on that. Um, let's see. <clears throat> I'm a, okay. Uh, is it uh, battery operated or hardwired? So again, if we're David, if we're back to access controllers, let's chat. Typically when we're hooking up a card reader to an access controller, we're going to need uh, power there, a uh, hardwired power. So, uh, let's talk about the application. Uh, directly and and see if we can't get you an answer. We've got a lot of oper a lot of solutions, including solar powered solutions that would power up a card reader. But again, that's going to be very specific to the installation type. Uh, Roberto asked about uh, training, and you'd mentioned training during the presentation. Um, are there training opportunities on your website or live training opportunities? Um, yeah, I, I think um, it depends on what the training is. If it's around credentials, then, um, you know, I, I would do training with you guys. I think we do have um, we do have a training um, team that does training. And I think they just did one around credentials. I think there might be a fee for that one. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm free. <laughs> so I can do training on that. In terms of installation, if it's around the readers, um, I think that would be pretty straightforward, but um, we can definitely look into that. Let's just talk about what, what sort of training you're interested in, and then we can find the best option there. Yeah, fantastic. And I, I did just answer a question to David uh, about pool gates. Yeah, actually, great question there. We do have battery, excellent battery operated lock sets that include keypads, card readers, and the identity credentials would work uh, just fantastic on those products. So we could put a solution together for you on pool gates that are battery operated, would not require hardwired power. And that is a, an area that is expanding quickly uh, the lock sets and connected lock sets, uh, we're seeing a lot of new options hit the market on that. So it's an exciting time for battery operated lock sets that also have, will accept credentials and mobile credentials. Perfect. Um, so does control products have access to government credentials and readers? No, um, because those ones are perform in a specific way um, to those are uh, those are more restricted you guys you guys have access to the commercial readers but not the government readers so 
Um, sorry about that. Yep. I mean, there's, there's certain products out there that, uh, you know, are locked down for good reason. Um, that and, you know, some certain hospitality type uh, programs. So um, we got to pick and choose there sometimes. Yeah. I mean, if if there's an, I mean, you can always reach out to me and we can talk about it, but as a, as a default, you do not have access to the government product line. Um, thank you, Tom. Um, I appreciate the endorsement. Yes, it was, it's been great working with you as well. And, uh, appreciate you giving me a shout out, um, and identify a shout out on, on this call. Yeah. And I, I don't throw out endorsements, um, kind of willy nilly, but I, I can say with Identive, they are very reactive and with the speed of business these days, that's what we need, right? We need somebody that cares about our business and that's reactive and can get us answers in a timely fashion. So uh, they're a fantastic partner in that regard. Great. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you everyone so much. Again, I know everybody's busy, so I appreciate the time. Um, I would really love to grow our business together. Let me know what I can do to help you. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of resources available. I'm always available to help. I can even go on sales calls with you. Um, you know, whatever we can do to, uh, or whatever I can do to make your life easier. Um, just let me know. Yep. But yeah, please reach out to me with any opportunities. Happy to talk through, um, you know, options for your customers and, and the best uh, credentials for them to use. Fantastic. And for anybody new to CPSG, we have a RFID department. We'll include uh, a contact email uh, for the RFID department, mostly focused on long range RFID and vehicle identification. We also have a uh, access control department. This group is phenomenal. Um, they handle more your typical quintessential access control, like you're looking here, looking at here. Uh, really focused on connectivity, right? Most products these days are somehow connected to the cloud, and uh, we've got absolute experts on how to, you know, get connectivity out to that perimeter, that gate, which can be a challenge sometimes. We've got options to. Um, not have to deal with a the local IT. Sometimes these applications do not want hardware on their IT infrastructure. So we can separate that out for you and also have a, a more predictable installation time where you're not uh, dependent upon that local IT uh, department for the company that you're servicing to provide connectivity to your access control needs. So um, we're very focused on providing high level service around access control in general, and we've grown this team significantly over the past few years. So definitely leverage their expertise to um, simplify your access control needs. Well, I don't see any more questions coming through, but that is okay. You can always reach out after the fact. We'll have uh, several uh, contacts for you in the post uh, webinar follow-up. So hopefully you took something away from this session. I certainly did. Uh, I think there's some products in the lineup that I was not thinking about Identif for and now realize that, you know, there are options there that we should be honing in on. So I want to thank you again, Diane, for organizing and presenting. Butch, Daniel Forte, thanks for organizing this as well and, and pushing us to do these sessions. We, uh, we got to keep on learning because there's lots of changes in the access control world these days. Perfect. All right. Thank you again so much. I really appreciate the opportunity and um, yeah, excited to work with you guys. Likewise. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thanks for joining.